It's a New York City murder mystery that has never been solved. But now, the brutal strangulation of Chanel Petro Nixon has Crime Watch Daily and PIX11 traveling from the gritty streets of Brooklyn to a Caribbean island paradise named St. Vincent, investigating who killed this beautiful 16-year-old. All we have left tonight are these posters of another honor student, a 16-year-old girl, a very quiet girl, home a lot, never missed church. Chanel's murder nearly 10 years ago made national news and prompted the Reverend Al Sharpton to turn crime fighter. It is unbelievable that a decade later that we're still talking about Chanel and, and the outrage of no one having been brought to justice. Chanel had everything going for her. She was an honor student who wanted to be a psychiatric nurse. She was good in listening to other people's problems, her friends. She left her Brooklyn apartment on Father's Day 2006, telling her mom she was meeting a friend. A young man, which I knew very well, he came to the house many times. Chanel knew the boy from church. He was a nice guy, so I didn't get any bad vibes from him. But Chanel never returned home. Her family and friends frantically searching. Her best friend, Kanika Ashterman, called the guy asking, where is Chanel? He told me that they were supposed to meet up at Applebee's. She never showed up. He hit her up and she never called back. Cops initially listed Chanel as a runaway. The lead detective on the case told PIX11's Mary Murphy, four days later, the trash collector makes a gruesome discovery. Sanitation department came by to, to remove the trash and one bag was too heavy. A resident of the building over there came out to separate the trash. So the lady opened up the bag and that's when she saw my daughter. What did you see when you looked in the bag? Young girl, body of a young girl. And was she wearing anything? Yeah, she had on blue jean shorts, a white tank top. The body was folded into the bag, like, almost like a fetal position. Then the, uh, the shorts were partially uh, pulled down. It was the body of Chanel. The autopsy reportedly shows Chanel had been hit in the face and head. Then that's when they told me, unfortunately, that Chanel was strangled to death. The NYPD retraced Chanel's last steps, asked the family, who was that friend who was meeting Chanel, the young man she met at church? They said his name is Veron Primus. What would be a break for you in this case? Um, the location to someone who, if someone knows the location of the incident. Of the actual murder. Of the actual incident, not, not where the body was discovered, the actual murder, where, they, where the actual incident took place. The NYPD reportedly called Primus a person of interest because he was apparently the last person to see Chanel alive. But they never linked him physically to the killing, and he's never been charged. Years later, he was charged and ultimately acquitted of the sexual assault of two women. A third woman claimed he tried to hold her against her will and got a protection order. He violated that order and went to prison for criminal contempt. In May of 2015, after Veron Primus finished doing state prison time in New York for criminal contempt, he was deported here to the island of St. Vincent, his birthplace. St. Vincent is a tiny island in the Southern Caribbean, some 2,000 miles and a world away from NYC. Primus moved to this house in a village at the foot of a volcano. He reconnected with an old grade school friend, Moana Hathaway, and they started dating. He started dating in August. Did he seem pretty nice? Yeah. He was always there. Like, if you needed somebody to talk to or you were going through something, he would always be there. He was generous to me. But Moana says he turned violent. And his rage, she says, turned her from girlfriend into captive. Next, Moana's hostage crisis. The grave meant for her and how she's helping the New York police in the investigation of Chanel's murder. It's like we're putting together a jigsaw puzzle and we're missing that one piece. 